So one of the things about new features in programs is figuring out how to actually use them in your workflow. Today, I'm going to show you how you can start using the encircling tool in your workflow, hopefully to make your masks a little bit better or to select objects. So here we are inside of on one looking at a photo of a person on a bike. I'm going to add a tone enhancer to this individual, but I'm going to use the AI selection tools that are available to us. So I'm going to select transport and people, and then we're going to click on tone enhancer. And this is going to give us a pretty good mask and starting point. And this is where I think most of us should probably start if the AI can pick it up. So if I bring up the exposure on him, open up the shadows and maybe even compress that a little bit more. Everything is probably starting to work a little bit uh, the way that I want it to. I know it doesn't look great. I'm doing this for tutorial purposes and then we'll make it make sense here in a little bit. Uh, but if I hit the letter O, you can see that my mask is really just like covering the whole guy here and it doesn't look very good. And if I go to the red overlay, you can see that I'm getting all of these selections in between here. And this is where that encircling tool uh, or the refine tool really shines. So we're going to hit the letter N on our keyboard. And what I want to do is remove this little window here from the mask. So I'm going to select paint out in the options at the top. And I'm going to use the original mode here. Make my brush just a little bit smaller because I want it to be fairly fine tuned. And all I'm going to do is paint around here all the way down until I get back, let it go. And what it's going to do is remove that area from my mask. Now you can see it didn't do the absolute perfect job here and that's okay. Uh, because this is where you can really start to go and refine with that perfect brush. So, you know, you're going to spend a little bit of time with masking, but overall I was able to use the AI quick select. And if I weren't doing this tutorial, I would probably be able to make this selection fairly quick. And I'm also, you know, just taking my time, still learning how these tools work, but I'm going to bring you along for the ride. I'd love to hear how you guys are using the encircling tool inside of on one photo raw 2023.5. If you haven't gotten it already, it's a free download for users who already own on one 2023. Now, if you don't have on one 2023 and you're thinking about picking it up, consider downloading the free 30 day trial. And then if you like it, you may want to purchase it, save some money by using free will photos 20 at checkout. And you know, it's a win win. I get a small commission and you get a phenomenal piece of software. So now when we get down here to these uh, tires, one of the new tools that we can use is the uh, the refine mask. And this time I'm just going to go with hair and branches because I think that on one would think of these bike spokes as branches. And all I'm going to do is paint over all of these little areas. Uh, and this time what you want to do is make sure that you cover the whole area and don't leave any gaps on the encircling tool. You kind of have to draw an outline and then leave the center piece that you want to select, leave that open. But with the uh, refine mask tool, what you really want to do is paint over the entire selection and then let it go. So we'll see if this uh, didn't really do anything for us there. All right. And this is where you have to kind of experiment. So we'll see if we can modify it by doing this and it still didn't pick up anything. And OK, so I think this is where user define kind of comes in and we will pull up on the sensitivity and let's see what happens when we paint over it again. It really does not want to remove that from the mask. So let's see what happens with the encircling tool. So I'm just going to paint this around the area that I want the mask to actually apply to. So we'll get this bottom piece first. We'll do something like that. Let it go. So it picked up that area. Uh, it didn't actually mask out these little 
uh, spokes. So, you know, they're, it's not a perfect tool, but it can get the job done uh, pretty good. We're getting more precision inside of On1 than what we have been accustomed to in the past. So if I hit the letter O and, you know, we look at how this is impacting the overall image, I don't think that's going to make a huge difference uh, because the focus should be on the rider. So if we increase the detail and I'm just going to crank up on this pretty hard uh, because I know that YouTube compresses certain things. Um, we'll compress, open up some of the uh, or make it a little bit more exposed and pull down on the blacks. So let's look at a before and an after. And you can see that I'm starting to get a pretty decent uh, look overall. So what I'm going to do is add a local adjustment and this time I'm going to select the background and you know see if that works. So the way that I do that is hitting the drop down and then we'll select background and that's selecting a good portion of the background. I think that we can add to this. So let's see if we can add some flora maybe. Nope. That wants to remove it and we don't want to add the rider or transport we're going to paint this effect away from the people and transport click apply and then we're going to see this go into the background and we're going to grab our refine tool and just like we did before we're going to encircle here and this is also a good time to mention you can copy and paste a mask inside of on one uh, why I'm choosing to do this the hard way, uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure other than the fact that I like to test out the new tools to see how they work. And the only way that I can get familiar with them is if I use them, uh, because as you notice, oh, and we want to paint in. So I need to go shift X and I want to paint in the adjustment this time I was on paint out. So that's the other reason why I don't really uh, need to use the copy and paste. Um, when I make these videos, a lot of times what I'm doing is learning how to use the software because I'm a firm believer that if you teach something, you learn it at the same time and you really have learned something when you can teach it pretty well. So that's why I take the time to uh, one, make these videos because it helps me get better. Um, and then I also get to share with all of you what I've learned and hopefully help you get your editing taken care of a little bit faster and get your creative workflow going and share your work with the world. That That's my true hope and, and dream here. So as you can see, it's doing a really good job at selecting those gaps or selecting those areas uh, minus this area down here, which I'm not sure why it didn't want to select that when I painted over everything, uh, the encircling tool wanted to select everything. But when I paint over it, like using the branches and uh, it doesn't want to really work. So that's fine. Um, what I can do with this particular mask is I'll add a blur to the edge. So by double clicking, it's going to add a little bit of a blur. So this mask will blend a little bit better and it's a little different than the feather because the feather is going to also add a a tapering effect to the edge of your mask and we'll go to the grayscale so you can kind of see that um, if i pull the feather down you can see and i guess i already added the blur so you won't really be able to see it uh, but with the feather pulled down and me making a mask normally you would see very very uh, defined edges but as you pull up on the feather you see it kind of softens that uh, overall mask well what it does is it pulls your pixels uh, from the left to the right and it makes this gradient um, and that's fine in some cases but what it tends to do is make this glow and that's why I use the blur on a mask once I have it and by double clicking I don't have to drag around it just adds whatever your amount is around the perimeter and it actually only works on the outer edge of your mask so 
uh, whereas the feather pulls from the inside and makes this gradient uh, and you could start to make some really interesting looking uh, effects. So that's why I use feather um, a lot and I always tell people to use feather, but using that blur tool is a little bit more of a fine tuned uh, ability to really make your mask stand out. So this is obviously way too much because he's super bright and the background is not so bright. So what I need to do is pull that back and maybe even pull down on the opacity of this particular effect. So, you know, we're going to make him pop, make him stand out, but we don't want to make it like super obvious, right? So there's the before and the after. The other thing that I could do with this particular image is probably pull down on some of the saturation in the background and not too much, but just enough to start giving uh, color contrast and separation. Now for the writer, what I can do is this time I'm going to add another adjustment and we will copy this particular mask. And I have a keyboard shortcut set up on my Elgato Stream Deck. So uh, I'm, I pushed that and it's copying the mask right now. But for anyone who doesn't have that, you can literally just click on any mask inside of On One and click the copy button. And then uh, I also have a keyboard sh shortcut to paste a mask. So I hit paste and it's going to paste that mask. Um, but that's no different than just hitting the paste option here. This way I don't have to repaint the mask every single time. I'm going to invert it and this is going to select just the rider. We're going to reset this because I don't need an exposure adjustment on him. But instead what I want to do is pull up on the vibrance. And this is going to help with making him stand out just a little bit more. It adds another level of pop to the image and I really appreciate this. So here's the before and here is the after. Hopefully you guys are finding a lot of value in using the new tools inside of On One 2023.5 and this really quick and you know gritty edit of showing you how you could practically use the tools in your workflow is value added. I'd love to hear how you guys are using these tools, the new features inside of On One, and hopefully you stay tuned so you can see some more uh, practical uses of the tools that are available to us. And if you got questions, drop it in the comment section below. I do answer all of my comments. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.